great tribulation, millions and millions and millions of people, every one of them were true Christians, the ones that you would call Bible thumpers, holy rollers. Every single baby and all the young children in the world have just disappeared into thin air. You've been warned for years and years, maybe decades, maybe a quarter century or more, maybe a half century or more, by family member and friends who have tried to tell you this is going to happen. You laughed, you mocked, you joked, you made fun of the Christians, you made fun of God, you made fun of Jesus, you made fun of the Bible. You're not making fun right now. All hell is starting to break loose on the earth. People are frantic trying to find their babies and young children. Most who care less that the Christians are gone. Actually, you're probably having a party, seeing that we're out of the way now. You won't have to listen to our holier than thou, as you call it, attitudes. But the babies and young children all being gone? Another story, a terrible story. People are crying, weeping, yelling, screaming, agonizing. The phone lines are so busy, they're shut down. You can't get through on the internet. It's shut down. There's just too many people that are trying to find their babies and young children. It's just the beginning, my friends. This is just the beginning of all hell breaking loose. Once opportunistic gangs start to realize that all the graves are break it, broken open, they're going to start looting jewelry, anything they can find from the graves. They're going to start coming to your house. Martial law will be declared. People will come in and they'll rape, they'll murder, they'll maim, they'll steal. They'll do everything like wild animals because it's going to be a wild animal mentality. As soon as the rapture happens, people realize that everything has just gone crazy. All the homes of the Christians will be looted very soon and just torn apart and doesn't matter if you still live in a home or not they're going to come after you they're going to come get it that's just the beginning a knight in shining armor is going to appear he's going to have the answers for everything I'm pretty sure he's going to tell you almost positive he's going to tell you that it was aliens that took all the people away the Christians were taken away he'll tell you because we were bad it was needed to get us out of the world so the world could be good again because the Christians were evil, he'll say. But the babies and young children, he'll keep that one in the back of your minds for later, which I'll discuss towards the end of the video. He'll have ideas how to make peace, how to keep your homes from being looted, how to get people back to work, how to get the, the world to come together again. And if temporarily, it'll work. He'll make peace in Israel for the first time ever in recent history since the old Bible days. He'll have a seven-year peace treaty with Israel and the Palestinians and her neighbors. But there'll be a couple of wars, though, a Psalm 83 war and a Gog Magog war, where there'll be all kinds of Middle East countries. In the first one, that attack Israel, and Israel will defeat. The second one, even people from Russia, China, North Africa, other nations will come and all be defeated by mighty acts of the hand of God, by natural disasters that God will throw on them to show Israel that he truly is God. And once that peace treaty is signed, Israel's gonna rebuild their holy temple, their third temple will be built. You'll see all this stuff happen. You'll know I'm telling you the truth. You'll come back to this video. My friend Sandy heard from the Holy Spirit that she saw her video counter just going crazy. And that was after the rapture because everyone who laughed at us and mocked at us and made fun of us, they'll be coming back to find the real truth because they'll know who the real Christians were It'll be too late then. So all this is going to be going on. But money won't be good for much longer if it's still good at all. There'll be a new currency being rolled out. It'll be called the Mark of the Beast. And it'll be something that they tout as being very convenient. Kind of like the RFID chip. It could even be the chip. It'll be something that goes in your hand or your forehead. And the Bible says that no man will be able to buy or sell unless they have this mark. They're going to tell you at first it's a great thing but they're going to put more and more pressure on you to have to get this mark. And once it gets fully implemented, what this mark actually is, is the mark of Satan. And if you take this mark of the beast, you're eternally damned to the lake of fire. You will never go to heaven at all. There's a chance to go to heaven still in the Great Tribulation. It's going to be really hard. You're going to have to be on the run. No food, clothes, water. You're going to have to be hunted down like a wild animal, beaten, imprisoned, and have your head chopped off for refusing the mark. 
But by doing that, refusing it, you'll instantly be in heaven on the second and last run. If you take the mark of the beast, like almost all the world will, you're damned to hell. You've married Satan, and your disposition is over for good, and you're in big, big trouble. Sorry for the dogs barking. Hope they don't bother the video too much. So anyways, after this happens, and the mark of the beast becomes permanent, then all hell's going to break loose. The Antichrist is going to come out. He's going to demand that he be worshipped as God. He's going to tear up the, the temple in Jerusalem. He's not going to tear it down. He's going to go in and desecrate it. Drive all the Jewish people out. Stop their sacrifice. And he'll go, this is halfway through, three and a half years through the seven year period. He's going to make it his, his mission in life to go after all the Christians and all the Jews for the last three and a half years. In the middle of all this, God's going to send out plagues and bowls of judgment on the earth. There's going to be asteroid coming out of the sky that's going to wipe out a good chunk of the population and parts of the earth. It's going to poison the water. The sea creatures will be dying from bloody water and from poison. There'll be The sun will be so hot, you'll get boils and blisters all over your body. There'll be locusts that come out of hell with stinging tails that fly around and sting people for months and months. There'll be, there'll be all kinds of water and food shortages, famine, plague, pestilence. There'll be all kinds of, I mean, it's going to be, there'll be armies coming down to attack you. The 100 million man army coming from China to kill a huge chunk of the population. It's going to be living hell, my friends. It's going to be beyond any description. You can't even make a horror movie that's going to make it sound as bad as it's going to be. And in the very end, God's going to drop 100 pound hail, 100 pound hail. People are going to hide in caves. The great leaders will hide under, underground and they'll beg God to bury them, to let them die, but they won't be able to die. God is just going to wreak havoc on this world through his judgments. He's given everybody chance after chance after chance. No one wanted to listen. No one cared. But now they will. There's no more rich. Everybody is equal. Everybody's poor. Everybody's just getting by, scraping by, barely making it. At the end of this great tribulation, after we've been in heaven for seven years with Jesus at the marriage supper of the Lamb, getting our rewards, getting our mansions, getting acclimated to heaven, our new heavenly home, Jesus will come back leading us with a two-edged sword from his mouth. The Holy Bible will be with him on white horses behind his main white horse. He'll come down, and then this is where the alien thing plays in again. I believe the Antichrist will say, look, the aliens are coming back now, the ones that stole your children and your babies. Let's go get them. And then all the armies of the world and all the people will get together at Armageddon at the Valley of Megiddo. And there'll be one last major battle, but it won't even be a fight. Jesus will lay waste to everybody. It'll be so bad, the blood will be running at the horse's bridle. For, for just miles and miles and miles. It's going to be horrendous. It's going to be horrific. Then at the end of that, anyone who is still alive that has the mark of the beast, Jesus is going to slaughter. Anyone who's alive that has refused the mark of the beast and is saved by the blood of Jesus Christ, they'll be able to enter in the millennial kingdom, which is a thousand year rule of Jesus on earth, his rightful rulership from Jerusalem as a human. And they'll repopulate for a thousand years. Satan will be bound. And those of us with Jesus in heaven who got raptured will be down helping them learn about Jesus and helping them stay close to Jesus. Also, the third of the Jewish population who remain, they will also go into the millennial kingdom because they will recognize Jesus and they'll come to him and repent. And the Jewish people and the Gentiles who were left over, who did not take the mark of the beast and who are saved, they'll repopulate the earth for a thousand years while Satan is bound. There'll be no death, hardly any death at all. The Bible says if you die at 100 years old, it'll be a pity. It'll be terrible. So people can live up to a 1,000 years. The earth will have a huge population. Total peace. No wars, nothing. Satan is, is put in the bottomless pit. All of the swords are beaten into plowshares. Then at the end of that 1,000 years, God will release Satan for one more time. Satan will come out in the bottomless pit. He'll get probably the majority of the people to follow him again because humans are evil. Even after having a 1,000 years with Jesus, they'll turn on him. They want to go back to Satan. And once that happens... Jesus will just destroy them, and then all of the dead who have ever lived in the history of the world will be risen from wherever they are, the watery grave, anywhere they are. And they'll have brand new bodies like we have. The Christians who are raptured, they'll have brand new bodies too, but they'll stand before Jesus Christ in what's called the Great White Throne Judgment. The angels will open up the Lamb's Book of Life, and these people's names will not be found in the Book of Life. They'll be read their sentence, they'll be shown what they lived in their life, how they were told over and over again by people like me who they called fools and stupid and holy rollers and dumb Christians. Jesus will show them, replay their life like on a video, could be a video, 
and they'll, they'll, they'll just be speechless. They'll have to sit and watch. They won't have any defense. They won't be able to say any words, but they'll have to fall on their knees and confess that Jesus is Lord. And right after they do that, Jesus will have them thrown into the lake of fire forever with eternal bodies that are perfect, where they'll feel pain a trillion times more maybe than they feel right now. And they'll be separated from God, from their loved ones and friends who are Christians forever. And they'll have an eternity of agonizing pain. While those who made it through the millennial kingdom, the humans, who did not go back with Satan, they'll receive eternal bodies. And then the new Jerusalem will come down from heaven. And I believe it will hover right above the earth because it's so huge, it'll, it won't be able to fit. And then the earth and the new Jerusalem and the universe, all the planets, that'll all be our eternal homes. We'll be able to explore, invent things, do things. It's going to be awesome for those of us who are Christians and who did what Jesus Christ wanted us to do. Those who didn't, they have to suffer for eternity in hell and there's no more chance to ever come back. It's terrible. I'm sorry for the dogs barking again, my friends. So the choice is easy. You need to come to Jesus Christ, accept him as your Lord and Savior, and if you have been saved and you're backslidden, you need to repent of those sins now because your time is running out. And if you don't do so, you will be stuck, left behind, and you could end up spending eternity in hell. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I pray that the unsaved would come to know you as Lord and Savior. I pray that the backslidden Christians, who are the majority of all Christians, there's very few of us, only a tiny minority that live for you the way the Bible says anymore, and that repent of our sins after we're saved. I pray they would come back to you before it's too late, Jesus, because if not, they're going to find out the hard way. They've missed the rapture, they're stuck for the great tribulation, and then all hell's going to break loose for seven years. Please convict hearts, rebuke, correct, teach. Don't give anybody any peace until they come back to you and repent or come to you for the first time as Lord and Savior. I ask these things in your precious name. Amen. If you do not know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, please pray this prayer with me so you can be saved. Jesus, I know I've sinned. I've done bad things in my life, and I'm sorry. I believe you came to earth. I believe you died on the cross for my sins. I believe you rose again on the third day. I believe you went back to heaven to be at the right-hand side of the Father to prepare a place in heaven forever for all Christians. Please forgive me of my sins, Jesus. Please come live in my heart. Wash my heart white as snow. Make me a new creature in Christ, a child of the King. In your precious name I ask it. Amen. If you pray this prayer, Jesus says in the Bible that all who come to me and ask shall be saved. Once you get saved, get you a King James Version Bible. It's the only real Bible out there. It's a living, breathing Word of God. It's food, water, substance for your soul and spirit. The way you eat food every day to feed your stomach, feed your body, you read the Bible to feed your soul and spirit. Pray to your new best friend, Jesus Christ, every day. He loves you. He wants to talk to you daily. Get water baptized. Pray to be sanctified with the Holy Spirit from head to toe as you grow in Christ in what little time we have left before the imminent rapture. Take your Bible to church. When the preacher starts to preach, if what he says don't match your Bible, close it, get up and walk out, find a new place to worship. If you have questions, comments, concerns, you want to pray, you want to chat, message me. If you have any prayer requests at all that run the gamut from a, a terminal illness to a sick pet, anything in between, you want someone to pray for you that believes, message me. I prayed for it and received the gift of faith. I have must receive faith now. Didn't do anything to deserve it. It was all Jesus Christ. It was a gift. But he performs miracles every day. I see miracles every day in my various ministries where God has healed somebody and performed a miracle in their life. And I just praise him for it. It's all for the glory of God. But I'll pray for you daily if you ask me to, believing that God will answer my prayers if I pray in his holy will. Please share this video message with whoever you can, friends, neighbors, loved ones, co-workers with strangers. Drop it in a blog somewhere, a post online. Plant a seed and walk away and let God water it so it can grow. Let's get the word out to everybody so they can be saved, they can repent of sins and iniquities, and their lives can be changed forever, all for the glory of God, never for ours. I love Jesus so much. I'm just his slave. I'm the least in God's kingdom. I'm nobody, a tiny fish in a huge pond. And I'll serve my master, Jesus Christ, till the day he calls me home. I love you guys. I pray for you every day. May God bless you. I hope to see you in heaven.